Buenas tardes eh, a todos, bienvenidos a esta recta final de, de este segundo encuentro de Genexus. Eh, antes de, de arrancar con esta charla, me gustaría hacer una especie de eh, testeo con el público para, para tener una idea clara eh, de, de qué tipo de auditorio tenemos enfrente para, para desarrollar esta charla. Eh, simplemente les voy a pedir que levanten la mano a las personas que habitualmente, a las personas que habitualmente eh, juegan eh, a jueguitos de computadora, más o menos. Ah. Bien, bueno, Good. la mitad más. Half of you. Eh, me gustaría que levante la mano Please la gente que conoce eh, un juego es muy nuevo, capaz que manos, eh, pero no, no quiero que nos sintamos mal por eso. Eh, el juego llamado Kingdom, Kingdom Rush. Kingdom Rush. Kingdom Rush. Atento. Quiero que levante la mano la gente que eh, jugó ese juego en las últimas 48 horas. Ah, bueno. <risa> <risa> Gente que jugó ese juego en las últimas 24 horas. Bueno, yo no, yo no, yo estoy limpio. Estoy limpio. Estoy limpio. Cuatro horas. Eh, en principio yo pensaba que iba a encarar una charla sobre un jueguito y dije, sí, recientemente, eh, a la gente que no lo conoce, pero a la gente que no lo conoce, por favor, no lo conoce, por favor, no lo conoce. Es muy peligroso, se ha convertido en un adictivo. Yo le digo todo lo contrario. I, I think the opposite. <risa> Go ahead, try it. This game has to do with the birth of a company called Iron High. And here I'm sitting with those responsible of this wicked product. Pablo Realini, Álvaro Azofra and Gonzalo Sande. They are responsible for the birth of this product. And we will show you a video so that you get to know what the product is all about. This microphone. I spent 10, 15 hours in the last few days playing this game. So why don't we talk with the designers of this product? Let me tell you, I'm not an example, but they were estimating that at present they have 160 million players. Or, no, games or sessions, not players, uh, games or sessions in different portals. They cover several portals, but this will come later on during the interview. They have also entered the Chinese market. This is one of the things that happened to this game. But 160 sessions um, make them second in the U.S. ranking. And they are fourth in the ranking of uh, paid for downloads for iPhone. Please, let's go to the first point. When was it that you decided to create this game or company? Well, it was a process. It was a third game. First, we had the idea of creating a game. That was our dream. 
We tried to do two games before. One was very small for the Flash portals. It did very well. Then a second attempt for Facebook. It was not so good. And then we decided to do something more important. That's when the idea of this Kingdom Rush appeared. What happened with the previous attempts? Did you follow more or less the same lines? Well, first of all, we had a defense game. It included more action. It was like arcade. You didn't need um, strategy. And the second was a trivia on the Soccer World Cup. There was such a fever that we decided to make lots of money by doing a Facebook game, but it was not successful. So what happened when you made this decision? You're talking about a larger project. What happened at that time? How was it? How did you start working in a more ambitious project after the first two attempts that were not so successful? Well, I think it developed gradually. We never thought of doing this game and taking about one year. We wanted to do a sort of tower defense game. We thought it would take us six months or five months. We never thought it would be what it is now. Things started developing, we saw the potential in the product, it had quality, and then we decided to expand. And we decided to continue until we were satisfied. It took us about a year or a little more. We worked every weekend for several hours, even uh, when we, we didn't, when we started, we were learning, we didn't know much about this type of uh, video game. We learned a lot about design, graphics, systems. Video games are difficult to program. It took you one year to develop the basic video game. Now we have uh, been improving it for the last year. Before you launched it, it took you one year to prepare it, yes. And did you work on your own? How was that? The three of us worked together in a small room, a very small room. I was sitting here, you were sitting there, Alvaro was behind me. So uh, we were all cramming in that room. That was in Alvaro's house. It was not a garage, it was a very small room. And what sort of support did you use at the level of... Um, making a living. Did you get any support? Well, we had our savings in some cases. The family supported us in case of an emergency, but all our savings went. But uh, how did you tell mom and dad I need money for this project? <laughs> Well, my friends, in, in my case, my mother almost collapsed when I said comics, and she said, no, that's not possible. She said, no, no, think about something else. So I did graphic design, and I said, I want to do games, and she said, oh, again, oh, not again. With your friends, not again. And then the third time she said, well, you try and we'll see. It was easier for me. Uh, and my mother said, can you make money with that? He said, yes, probably. And so she said, go ahead. In my case, it was difficult. I was working in a company. And I told the people in the company, I'll quit because I want to devote my time to video games. And my, my, my mother was not very happy about it. And my father said, go ahead. They helped me. The company also helped me. They gave me facilities like working part time so we could take the other half day for the company. And then when we had to start working full time, I had to quit. Was it necessary to devote a full time activity? Yes. At one point in our meetings, we said we should take this more seriously. We began by saying, let's see what happens first. But now it's a, a company with an office, it's very formal. But with Kingdom, we had to make a decision. We either do this full time or it won't take off. So we decided to do it full time. And we worked hard for five months and we were successful. Now, talking about the game, you said that you learned to do video games that you had no previous experience with. 
So tell ¿Se puede me, contar el proceso de esto que terminó siendo un gran éxito en este momento? Um, con, con millones de personas jugando en todo el mundo y por lo menos por, por mi experiencia personal es un juego que eh, uno siente que, que, que desafía con, con, mucha, eh, con mucha honestidad intelectual, si no sé si es la palabra correcta, pero eh, uno se siente realmente desafiado, por eso sigue jugando, really porque dice que hay una respuesta eh, a, a cómo se soluciona eh, esta pantalla, pero eh, no la encuentro no, y, y hay como una, una, una cosa ahí que, que uno se le imagina siempre al lado del jugador, la vida del lado del jugador, cómo es vivirlo del otro lado y desarrollarlo del otro lado, y más sin, sin experiencia previa, ¿Cómo ¿Cómo experiencia? Well, there are two ends. One part is a technical development, programming, art. Uh, it's not as easy as programming functions. That's a whole set of things. And on the other side, you have the um, design level, and you must somehow entice and appeal to the users and players. So they, you have to uh, trap them and, uh, and make them enthusiastic about it. You have to read, and you have to try and test this and that. Uh, this generates um, this sensation or the other sensation and you get tips from people all over the place and then you just uh, put yourself in the place of the player and try to imagine what they would like. At each level um, what we do is very artisanal. And it takes us hours to think about each single thing. It takes time. It's not an algorithm that generates levels. They are all aesthetically generated and they have to coincide with other levels to really create an experience at the level of players. He is to be blamed for that part. You're talking about the peculiarities of the game within this genre, but what, how can you explain the success of this game? Because you can compare it in the Armor Games portal, and most of the video games there have less sessions, but this far exceeds all the rest we have available. Well, this is a one dollar, million dollar question. Uh, I don't know if this is successful or not. You always try to do your best, uh, and you hope that people think likewise. We never thought this would be so successful. It really exceeded all our wildest dreams. Mm, we did lots of testing. Uh, when we started doing the game, when we had the prototype, we did some testing with friends, then with other people, three or four testings, and before releasing it to the portals, the testing included 10,000 people in a blog. And then we changed many things. Maybe the difference between the success of a product and a failure, it all has to do with details. So testing, trial and error, they are very useful. And you see that sometimes we present things very quickly and that generates um, some complexities. You cannot give so many things to the players at the same time. So there is a learning curve that needs to be respected. We put a lot of love into this, a lot of thinking into this. What about launching this product? What were the first steps once you had launched the product after the first few testings? What happened gradually to that game? Because you saw that the process went quite fast. Mm. It's instantaneous. When it was uh, uploaded at the internet portals, there was uh, like a landslide of comments uh, by the users. And that was the first time, and what was that portal, Armovent? The game was there for six months exclusively in Armovent. That's why we have today 160 million Ah. It's, it's very difficult to follow them because, no nada. Uh, yes, we hear every now and then what you say. <laughs> oh, it was so hard for us to express these words. You have to be aware of the microphones, and if you all speak at the same time, we can get what you say. <laughs>
Bueno, eh, estamos, estamos contando de, de cómo empezó a, a caminar comercialmente eh, el juego. Pon el trailer, bueno. El primer paso que alcanzó un éxito inmediato, dicen ustedes, muy rápido. Eh, pero, okay. digamos, hay... Hay más cosas que pasan después, que digamos, que ¿qué, ¿qué fue lo que pasó después del éxito? Que lo primero que la respuesta del público, eh, ¿qué pasó con, con, con la respuesta del, del, del sistema? La respuesta del Porque ahí aparece algo que vale cuando la gente interesa jugar. En cuanto al éxito del juego, bueno, creo que lo mejor para medirlo en el juego de nosotros game, Um, we saw that in the way we grew at the level of social networks. I think we had 300 Twitter followers before the launching the game, but probably a thousand Facebook followers. But today, we have over 60,000 Twitter followers and 300,000 followers in Facebook. 600,000, sorry, 300,000 followers in Facebook. That doesn't work. How many people have followers? The figure goes up and up every minute. Three hundred thousand now. That's true. And we have this rose by a thousand a day. And these are people who come from video games to see what we are doing as a company. At the level of industry, I don't know if your question included that. It was unique. We started getting proposals from Lucasfilm, the Star Wars director. ¿Y cómo, y cómo llegan a eso? Pero igual... ¿Por qué le dicen que no a Lucas? No, no sé si estamos felices por, por decirle que no. Le, le dijimos que no en realidad porque para tratar de mantenerlos en, en la línea de, de seguir haciendo nuestros propios juegos. Obviamente es una empresa tan grande como, como la Lucas, es Lucas, que viene a buscar para trabajar en sus propiedades intelectuales. A nosotros le pedimos un porcentaje del videojuego que íbamos a hacer y dijeron que no. Bueno, no, no le dijeron que no directamente. Le dijimos, bueno, si nos dan un porcentaje de las ganancias... A la larga creemos que es mejor apuntar a nuestra propia propiedad intelectual. Desde ese punto de vista, ¿cómo es el tema? ¿Ustedes qué propiedad intelectual tienen sobre el juego? ¿Propiedad intelectual sobre Kingdom? Bueno, Kingdom belongs to us. We have a copyright, and we always work on what is ours. This is our success. Otherwise, it's not our success. Eh, hay, hay algo interesante que por lo menos lo, lo, lo habíamos hablado en la previa y que, y que tiene que ver con eh, un primer momento eh, del juego desarrollado en estas condiciones, eh, saltando al vacío, comiéndose los ahorros, eh, siendo bancados por la familia y, y a partir de, de determinado momento eh, aparecen eh, ciertos apoyos a partir justamente de, de, del éxito del juego. Eh, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo funcionó ese momento y cómo fue sobre todo empezar a pensar en términos empresariales? No sé si, si alguno de ustedes tenía experiencia eh, en ese sentido, eh, en empezar a tener digamos vínculos con gente que quiere invertir que quiere eh, digamos eh, también participar obviamente de las ganancias del juego cómo cómo vivieron ese momento Creo que lo, lo más difícil hoy en día, que al menos el mayor reto que nos nosotros es, 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 es el tema de saber gerenciar lo que podría ser. Hoy en día somos seis, nomás, pero tenemos planes de expansión y bueno, planes de expansión, otro tema de una empresa, de empleados, de cargo. Y sí, sobre el tema de inversionistas, nosotros como fuimos a Estados Unidos, tuvimos varias reuniones. We had several meetings, and they told us. I think they were really curious about the quality of the game and what we had been able to achieve. And yes, we had reunions. We were saying, "Well, look, we have a lot of people." Gente muy importante so we met en with important people in the industry, para um, en, and they said we have five million dollars to invest in two video games, and you are top of the list. Y What do you think? Era, and our answer was. No, 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 no,
no, no, creemos que no es el momento, recién estamos empezando y muy joven, muy joven, tenemos un videojuego, no sabemos qué va a pasar en el futuro, estamos preparando la segunda versión que suponemos que le va a dar un valor muy grande a nuestra empresa y queremos mantenerlo con cautela, nos cuesta mucho, mucho, así como decirle que no a, a Lucas, Warner, a Amy Sea, es una empresa que ha venido a hablar con nosotros, tratamos de tomarlo en las cosas no pensar tanto a largo plazo en las decisiones que puede pasar a nosotros. Es decir, vamos a tomar una decisión que no va a tener un año con una empresa para adelante. Nosotros tratamos de tener cuidado. Tomar decisiones a corto plazo y mantenernos en eh, están eh, en el mercado chino eh, y, y me contaban un poco ahora antes eh, so, sobre lo que fue entrar ahí eh, y en realidad hay todo un gran tema eh, que, que es eh, el acceso a los mercados pero sobre todo con, con un producto como este que uno piensa yo por ejemplo le vengo jugando gratis y no me han sacado un solo peso hasta ahora eh, pero ¿cómo, ¿cómo se rentabiliza una cosa así? ¿Cómo, ¿cómo funciona eso? ¿y cómo fue evolucionando el juego en ese sentido? que por lo que ustedes cuentan eh, tampoco es digamos el, el objetivo principal Principal, digamos, le están diciendo que no a, a millones de dólares eh, por, por una cuestión de, de, de mantener por ahora la pureza del juego, por lo menos la pureza de la propiedad. ¿Cómo, cómo funciona eso y cómo se han parado ustedes frente a, a esa posibilidad del mercado chino? Y el mercado chino de la rentabilización del juego. El mercado chino, ¿cómo se Well, there are different ways in which you can make it profitable. It depends on different platforms, sponsors sometimes pay to use the logo as part of the game, or you have, may have paid contents inside the game with extra screens. That's another possibility. The Chinese market is a little bit more difficult because once you have the game there, there are portals that had already hacked it. And they had de, de removed all the blocks that we have set no in, so we could not re-establish the game on that basis. Que que so what we did to uh, counter-react that case was to have a, uh, an official vision with advertising with a control content. There are many other ways, like um, other using other platforms. There is a freemium model. The freemium is very similar to the flash model. You sell screens. In our case, we sell heroes or powers to the users, and that's another way of uh, making it profitable. We in China, uh, on the basis of one of our trips to the U.S., we had a contact with an American company that is quite important in terms of monetization and advertising, and they, have, and they are part of Shanda Beans, a very important company in China. So we obtained a partner in the country, and they did the job of removing the a pirate versions in the portals. They were horrible, they would block our links, we had links nowhere, not even in our site. We did not receive any traffic. The reality for us is that of 160 million players, 80 million are in China, just to give you an idea of the size of the Chinese market at the level of video games. Bien. Con ese panorama, con esa llegada, ¿ustedes se plantean seguir desarrollando ese Uruguay? Me contaron que por ejemplo están lanzando o lanzaron esta semana eh, el cómic también como, como una forma de, de, de seguir eh, dándole vida a la, a la, a la franquicia eh, desde acá eh, ¿cómo, ¿cómo es esa historia? Sí, la, la idea es seguir expandiendo sí, la idea es una de las ideas fue hacer un cómic para, 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 para ver qué pasaba no, no, sabe, no tenemos todavía los datos porque lo lanzamos recién esta semana pero vamos a ver cómo funciona nuestro plan es hacer eh, lo mismo que hace Angry Birds rollo Angry Birds hace lo mismo y y cómo es eh, tratar de explorar esa frontera de Uruguay, eh, digamos, tratar de eh, dar los primeros pasos como empresa y en el terreno de, del videojuego, eh, ¿cómo, cómo, cómo, cómo lo viven ustedes, por lo menos empujando ese carrito. Ya creo que muchas contras well, no, no hay de Uruguay no hay negativos porque nosotros estamos afuera y queremos estar acá por el tema de nuestra familia y nuestra familia y nuestra familia y nuestra familia el gran tema es creo que si trabajas de Uruguay al menos en videojuegos tienes que viajar en videojuegos tienes que viajar mucho una de las patas más importantes son los contactos tienes que hacer contactos si no vas a los eventos nosotros una cosa que nos damos cuenta con la IALA GS que si no vas a los eventos internacionales es muy difícil tener contactos hoy 10 meses después teniendo un juego relativo 
10 months after the game became successful, we have a minor contact in Apple, and every time we release something, we announce it to them. So I think it's very important to travel, because here um, there are other limitations. Uh, there is one retention in the U.S. I'm not going to talk about that. Ustedes eh, desarrollaron el juego solo, solo ustedes tres. ¿Qué, qué, ¿Qué parte hizo eh, cada uno? ¿Cómo, cómo funcionó el equipo? ¿Y cuál fue la, la, la importancia del trabajo en equipo? Es muy importante trabajar en equipo. Él está programando y desarrollando. Hacemos arte y ilustración de juegos. Y yo hice el diseño de los juegos. But the concept of the game and the mechanics is a teamwork. The three of us together with the rest of the team. We think ideas and we produce the game. What virtues do you see in this type of teamwork? How do you describe that dynamic? Because two can be complex. Three 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 is a good team. We're discussing something. Two could be part of a discussion, and the third could really act as an intermediary or as a mediator. Now we are six, and we try to integrate everybody into the team so they all contribute their ideas, and the product will be better. No, hay, digamos, no se generan liderazgos o momentos donde uno quiere tomar las decisiones. No, no hay ese tipo de. No, creo que a nivel de Fortunately, one of the things that we always mention is that we do not have personal egos that interfere. It's the other way around. We are going to Korea, and we say, Albert, you should go, and he says, No, you should go. There's no ego. Nobody wants to be the one who goes. Regarding definitions, when we have to make decisions, it's like having a love relation. The three of us are different. We have our own attributes, but basically, we we are similar. But I am more a mechanic. I work with information. They are more on the artistic side. So it's good for us to create products that we can contribute something different. We discuss things, and sometimes we spend days discussing, and we have witnesses here to to really. Uh, affirm this. But then we know that we discuss in order to find something that will improve the product. It's not because I want to be right. No. And sometimes we recognize when we are wrong, you are right. Yes, I was wrong, and this is best for the product. So this is very valuable. How about this? You're right. He's right. I'm right. This is 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 right. And we understand what is best for the product. When we have something, if we say something about a product, we have to be convinced. The three of us have to be convinced because if we make a decision, we will all push in the same direction, and we will hope for the best. That's internal. But what happens when you relate to the public? When did you realize that you made a good decision? Porque vi imagino comentarios de la gente, pero cómo se han relacionado con eso en el tema del desarrollo y el perfeccionamiento del juego. Well, you have to be in touch with the community. You generate a community around the game and the developer. It's like extra activity. You also need to know how to read the signs, and you have to react quickly. This is what we can do. If we read the social networks and the comments, uh, we take that into account. We have to be close to people. We have to respond to their messages. If the messages come to you, you have to respond to them. Maybe there is something that you can learn from each message. Sometimes the messages are not consistent, but nevertheless, we try to get something out of it. Maybe he is right in this or that. 
tendremos problemas de cambiar. And si if we have to change something because digamos, it is not working, we do so. Y hoy por hoy, eh, para, para terminar, mío, para, para, para ir redondeando, eh, la empresa está creciendo, eh, tienen eh, digamos, ya empleados, contratados, son empresarios. Eh, ¿Cómo? Bueno, son. son ¿Estás? Sí. Eh, ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo se sienten dentro de este mundo? Digamos, vos me decías, en Uruguay lo importante es viajar, en realidad el mundo está en otra parte. ¿Qué tipo de pececitos, entre qué tipo de pececitos se sienten? Me interesa esa imagen, sobre todo teniendo en cuenta de que desde algo muy chiquito se construyó algo muy grande. Por lo menos lo que sienten ustedes en este momento, capaz que esto queda acá y dentro de cinco años estamos hablando de una imagen totalmente distinta. No, creo que la idea nuestra es no checarse nunca. Los de competidores que tenemos We have the App Store, we compete against Yale, Rodeo, Disney. Nunca no, nunca no. No, we are very courageous. Your part of this. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry on. We always shoot for the stars. Let's carry Sí, yo creo que, que una de las cosas, el mercado cambió mucho. Entonces, el mercado cambió mucho. Hoy en día, con todo el tema de la carga digital, con el digital download, una empresa chica puede competir. Obviamente no le puedes competir en velocidad. No puedes competir en términos de speed, pero puedes hacerlo en términos de calidad o innovación. Eso es lo que estamos tratando de hacer nosotros. Y eso es lo que estamos tratando de hacer. Esa línea y ese montón de nuestros posts tienen que estar buenos, tienen que tener un estándar de calidad, tienen que ser de buena calidad. Y la única forma de poder competir es que tienen que competir con mil personas más grandes. With companies that have over a thousand employees, more than enough. No, I think this is all for now. The story is very exciting. Maybe if you have never played the game, it's very hard to understand. But you are firm. Y, y por ejemplo decirle que no a gente que quiere venir a probar mucha guita o que les ofrece eh, me, me parece muy interesante me, me gustaría eh, si pueden eh, que, que, me, que me cuenten eh, yendo al otro digamos eh, a la otra cara de la situación eh, cómo, cómo fue o, o si identifican si tienen una idea de, del momento más eh, más crítico cuando estaban eh, digamos si, si en algún momento los, los abordaron las dudas o si, o si tuvieron la sensación de que tenían que dejar todo y salir corriendo eh, porque me parece que, que, que puede haber sido eh, un momento por lo menos como está planteada la historia para, para mí el momento fue antes de largar Kingdom Rush hace un año estábamos trabajando Pablo había dejado el trabajo cuando, igual tipo, tuvimos una charla antes de eso y la tipo antes de sacarlo obviamente no sabíamos qué iba a pasar no sabíamos cuánta plata íbamos a hacer si íbamos a recuperarla y era, si nos iba mal, era el momento crítico de decir, bueno, ¿qué te hace? Tuvimos la charla y creo que los tres llegamos al acuerdo de decir, si no lo hacemos después de haber estado un año invirtiendo toda nuestra plata en esto, seguimos metiendo ley, seguimos adelante. Yo creo que en ese, al menos para mí en ese momento fue, claro, elegí a las personas indicadas para dedicarme a esto. I decided. This is what I want to do. I think it was a turning point for all of us and we all decided to carry on. Bueno, muchas gracias eh, a todos y Thank bueno, you. sigan disfrutando esta uh, recta final del vigésimo segundo encuentro Genix.